Everybody, Annie Rivera here with Annie Talks. We're happy that you've joined the podcast. We're so excited to bring to you information about Monster Jam Triple Threat, which actually is going to be at the Staples Center here in Los Angeles starting Friday, July 12th through Sunday, July 14th. And why is this so significant? Because first of all, it is a triple threat series. So it's returning uh, here to the Southern California, but more importantly, first time ever at the Staples Center. And what's interesting, if you don't already know what the Staples Center is like, Staples Center is this gigantic, beautiful stadium, enclosed stadium at that. It's an arena. So if you've been to a Monster Jam, event you know that there's high octane revving monster trucks so you can imagine the enormity about sound and sights and just all the wonderful pump and circumstances that go along with monster jam so we have a wonderful guest who is a monster jam driver as well he frequents here quite often here in uh, locally in Los Angeles and in the Anaheim Orange County area. He's originally hails from the city of Whittier here in California and none other than the wonderful driver of the El Toro Loco Monster Jam truck is my guest Armando Castro. I'm excited for all of you to get to hear from Armando and to hear how he's come to be this accomplished driver that he is today. So without further ado, here now is my conversation with Armando Castro. Well, I'm really uh, thankful that you're able to join us. I know that your schedule is super, super busy. So um, <laughs> just get started. I know that you've been to the Anaheim Stadium because you're here from, you're here in um, locally in Whittier. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and I'm not too far from you. I actually grew up in Carson, but I lived in OC all my life almost. So awesome. <laughs> I know I'm very, very familiar with where you are and, and whatnot. So. And we frequent Anaheim quite often. We go to the Anaheim Stadium to, uh, to watch Monster Jam. And my son, I have to say, is one of your biggest fans. So, <laughs> and he's. Hey, well, thank you. Yeah, he's 23 years old. He's a kid at heart, but he loves it. He, he it's like his thing to to do. He absolutely loves going. So that's awesome. One of the things that we're curious about is how do you go from Anaheim Stadium, where it's this open air, you know, to the Staples Center? I I'm sure that had to be a little bit of a a, a learning curve and um, or or how loud and how you know how different is it from say Anaheim yeah so I mean obviously Anaheim's uh we, we would call it a stadium show um mm -hmm. obviously it's a it's a big floor it's a uh, yeah, baseball you know floor and we have so much room to uh you know uh have these trucks wide open and and you know be able to do backflips and all these extreme things we were able to do with these trucks but uh you know and now that we're we're uh transitioning and kind of going into uh arenas um it's it's much more confined it's, i mean it's much more smaller but i mean i think stadiums is more of a kind of like you know let everything on on the track and mm -hmm. stadiums is kind of more technical it's more 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 skills that comes uh within driving inside an arena because i mean you're inside sometimes even hockey dashers or um uh just uh, it's just like a, a basketball floor it's so small yeah. So we have to have more control of a truck and the things we're doing with it, like the two wheel skills, the moonwalks and the wheelies. And it honestly yeah. takes so much more skill rather. I mean, anybody can, you know, push right. the pedal to the metal and, and, you know, let it loose, but it's more technical driving and you actually have to be able to have the skills to perform these stunts we're actually doing inside a small confined arena. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's totally different. It's, it's a different animal, but, uh, you know, I've been doing it for about the past three years and, uh, I think, uh, I'm pretty good at, uh, you know, at it now. So, uh, yeah, I'm, like, I'm actually excited to be here at the Staples Center. So I can't wait. Yeah. I mean, the other thing, too, that we were wondering about is, like, the noise level because it's got to be magnified, what, you know, I mean, multiple times like because <laughs> echoes, right? I mean, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that you have your, your, your um, earplugs or headsets. I don't even know what they call them. But, 
for the audience, it's like, we're, we're, you know, it, I mean, we love it, but it's like, it's that much more magnified and, and much more intense. So it, it is, it's going to be really exciting. I'm, I'm excited. We're excited to go see that, to go see it. But now tell us about the t- triple threat. Now it's the first time here to the Staples Center, but is it the first time in exi- existence? I'm not sure what the triple threat means. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the triple threat has been around for a couple of years now. Okay. Uh, we're actually coming back for the second time uh, this year. We're actually performing at the Staples Center last year. I was there as a backup driver, um, but this year I'm actually able to compete during the show. I'm going to be driving out Toro Loco, but for what the Triple Threat uh, Arena Series is, um, obviously in Anaheim, all you, all you see is, you know, trucks and, and just, just the Monster Jam trucks. So arenas, we call it Triple Threat because we, we drive three different vehicles and, and, and in competition as well. So we drive the Monster Jam trucks. Uh, we compete in the Monster Jam Speedsters, which are like side-by-side players, Razors. And we also compete in ATV. So um, it's like six or seven different competitions within a show. Um, we're bouncing back, you know, from the trucks to the ATVs, and we have to change, and then back into the trucks and uh, into the speedsters. And, you know, so it, it's nonstop. It's actually more of a physical demanding. It's uh, more of a, the younger, up-and-coming, next-generation drivers that uh, are inside and doing these uh, Monster Jam Triple Threat shows. Um, right. So that's a different aspect between a Monster Jam show at Anaheim and at Staples Center. You're much more closer to the floor. We have more, you know, fan to fan interaction. Um, they can see us inside the trucks much closer. You know, we're in ATVs. We can see all the fans, uh, you know, the speech stairs and stuff like that. So uh, it, it, it's it's an absolute blast. We're actually uh, jumping, you know, these the speech stairs and competitions and, uh, you know, racing ATVs when it's all of a, all eight athletes on the floor. So, um it's kind of cool to see, you know, all of us at, on the track at the same time and, you know, competing and obviously being so much closer to the fans. So. Yeah, I think so. Now I was reading a little bit of your bio. I know that Tom means our Tom Benz is, is, is one of the, the, the um, drivers that, are, that you look up to, but when you're not say driving or, you know, in your, in your, your element, um, what do you do to, you know, relax or, I mean, is there something, is there something that you do? Do you have a ritual that you do that, you know, maybe to help you? I know music relaxes you, but, um, is there, what do you do to kind of get in that mindset? Do you, do you, do you look at the competition or do you just kind of get a, a mindset of your own and you just kind of come within your, yourself and, and, and figure, you know, I, I'm just curious as to what, what Armando does to kind of get ready? <laughs> well, um, I, I mean, every driver has their own little, you know, uh, ritual and stuff like that. You know, some people like to listen to music. Some people just like to, you know, not even, not even think that they have a show within the you know, next hour or so. And I, I, like I said, I like to listen to music. I like to walk the track and, you know, check out the jumps because, you know, obviously the track and the jumps layout are always different. Uh, yeah. They're not going to build in the exact same. The one, one show, uh, a jump might be steeper, or the next show it might not be a steep. So uh, I like to walk the track and just kind of, you know, get, get, get pretend I'm actually, you know, driving when I'm walking on the floor and, you know, have, have maybe plan my first two hits for freestyle, freestyle, or, and then the rest is kind of just wing it just wherever the truck sends me. And um, yeah, I mean, I like to just kind of just, you know, keep it cool. I mean, just kind of get in the zone and just kind of think of what I'm going to do. And, but uh, I mean, most of the time it's all about just having fun. You know, I don't really get, the, you know, the pressure don't get to me no more. Yeah. I just like to have fun out there. If I can make, you know, kids smile and make, you know, memories for a lifetime, that's, you know, that's what matters most to me. Yeah. So um, uh, just, just, just have fun out there and just kind of, you know, just always remember that, you know, I was once that fan and, uh, it's kind of cool, you know, that now, and now that I'm driving, I know what the fans want and expect from a driver when I see somebody on the floor. So now that I can kind of, you know, put my fan aspect to driving, it's actually pretty cool and actually helped me out a lot. So, um, yeah, just while having fun and, you know, making, making, making memories. Right. Now, how much time do e- does each driver get, you know, on, on, on the course, let's say, I mean, you know, it, it's different for each stadium and each location. I mean, I'm just kind of curious as to, you know, w- what can you give us a little behind the scenes is like how much time do you get to to uh, feel out the course or feel out the stadium yeah yeah so um um mainly all shows that we do have we fly in maybe thursday um and then friday we would have practice um like since uh, i'm in arenas i say i fly in thursday like we always do 
Uh, then we have practice Friday because Friday we always have a show at seven. Mm-hmm. So we have practice maybe uh, at one thirty or two, and we actually get to feel, you know, get to drive on the track and you know, kind of kind of get a feel for you know how the dirt is, gonna, if it's loose or if it's really tacky, and you know that all that comes into play when you're kind of trying to race or drive because if you come into a turn and the dirt's really tacky, it's going to grab you and you, you, you can possibly roll over. So um, it's kind of just kind of just behind the scenes things. We, we, we practice, and if we don't feel comfortable, if we want to do it, you know, and give another try, yeah. we would, you know, that's what we do. And we actually, uh, we always practice our first round of racing against uh, another competitor. So, you know, we actually have somebody to kind of race, but at the same time, you're not really pushing. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's not a show. Yeah. don't count, but, you know, we, 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 try to, we try to figure out, you know, the, 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 the balance of, you know, well, wait, you know, I'm pushing, I'm driving too hard to this turn or I'm coming too slow to the turn. So, um, yeah, we actually get a practice and, um, it, uh, kind of feel kind of just pay, you know, with experience and kind of just feel out the track. So that's, uh, I guess a little thing I can uh, say we actually do and, uh, makes us uh, better uh, when we come driving the show. So absolutely. Now, is there any, any one person that you pattern yourself after? I, I mentioned Tom Mintz earlier, but I'm not necessarily I'm sure if he's the one that influences you, but like, is there one person like me growing up? I've always wanted to be a singer and Maria Osmond was my idol. I always wanted to emulate myself like her, but is there any uh-huh. one particular driver for you that you maybe um, pattern your, your own um, way of driving or way of performing? Yeah. Um, I mean, everybody has their own, uh, you know, driver that they look up to and stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, obviously, like Dennis, Dennis Anderson, you know, he, yeah. he's, he's the legend. He's the, the creative grave digger that's been doing it for many, many years. And uh, he's kind of the one that kind of kind of build Monster Jam or what it is today. And so um, he would have to be uh, one that I can say I can uh, truly look up to. I mean, every time I was here at the Angel Stadium, he was uh, driving. So, um, yeah, he's a great role model. Actually, uh, he's actually I started with his daughter, uh, Kristen Anderson, and uh, we've actually been on tour for the last few years. So. Um, he's been around and he's been kind of keeping tabs on me and it's kind of cool, you know, uh, from, uh, I'm obviously always going to be a fan no matter how far I make it into the sport. Um, mm-hmm. So it's kind of cool, you know, somebody that I look up to and, you know, that was a role model and somebody I've always dreamed to, you know, one day have a chance to drive a monster truck. And now that he's, you know, kind of comes up to me and gives me advice and, you know, Hey, my mom, you're not seeing this since day one. And, you know, to where you are today, I'm very proud of you. And it's kind of, it's kind of cool, you know, just, yeah. just to, go through that whole experience because I mean, never in a million years my six-year-old self when I first attended my first show I never would have thought you know I would have Dennis Anderson hey you know giving me advice or you know congratulating me on some you know the trick I've been doing or how I drive and my driving style so um that's the, I mean I can say he was the one that I can kind of look up to and I've always looked up to so uh he's the man he's the legend so a lot of respect for Dennis that's for sure absolutely how exciting is that <laughs> Now, for those listening, um, Armando will be – now, will you be driving El Toro Loco at, 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 um, at the same time? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes so, I'll be there driving all five shows. So. Oh, wonderful. So, on um, Friday, starting Friday, July 12th through the 14th at the Staples Center here in Los Angeles, all listeners and fans, if you'd love to go see Armando Castro in El Toro Loco um, and, and all the other um, – Monster Jam uh, drivers, feel free to check out the website. You can check it out at monsterjam.com. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing you, Armando. I'm excited. My son's going to be excited. <laughs> he's a 22 year old <laughs> kid, and it, you know, he just loves it. He just he's he's in awe every time he sees you. So I mean, I'm, that's awesome. Yeah, like I actually turned 23 this year. So I mean, I, uh, I, I like I tell everybody, you know, we're we're always kids. We never grow up. Just our toys get more expensive. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me i'm so excited i'm and i'm really thrilled to, uh, that you've ha- you came on my show i really appreciate it well thanks for having me and i hope uh, i get to see y'all at stable center and uh bring the whole family and uh you know i need all the support now that i'm going to be the only local boy there so i'm excited and i can't wait well well all the local support will will definitely cheer you on <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Well, that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Annie Talks and learning about the upcoming event, the Monster Jam Triple Threat Series coming to the Staples Center July 12th through the 14th. It features my guest, Armando Castro, the driver of the Monster Jam truck, El Toro Loco. I will have all the ticket information and details down below in the show notes. So 
be sure to check that out. Thank you all again so much for tuning in and keep listening to Annie Talks.